All right, guys, today we are tying a variation of a spawning shrimp. Um, kind of a little bit of a permit crab pattern, but really it's a great bonefish fly. Super buggy pattern. It's got a good body and some silly legs on it. Uh, got the egg sack off the back, some eyeballs. Pretty simple tie, but been a super effective in Turks and Caicos, Belize, a lot of different places we've been. Different ways to tie it. Um, you can keep it as simple as you want, but this is uh, just the way we like to tie it. So let's get into it. <laughs> I got a one side ah! on today. So again, this is going to be a variation of a lot of classic bonefish patterns kind of tied into one. I don't necessarily have a name for it because I don't necessarily know what it is. But uh, I've tied this pattern several times and it has worked very well in the Bahamas, um, Turks and Caicos, and Belize actually. So. Again, if it's small, shrimpy, crabby, spawning shrimpy looking, it's going to work. It doesn't have to be a perfect textbook tie in my book. And that's kind of how I like to tie flies. So, let's get into this one. Um, you can tie it with a lot of different colors. I kind of like to use this hot green, lime green color. Just because it's really the only place you see the threads of the very front of the uh, fly itself. But, get your little thread base going there. And the very first thing we're going to do, kind of take it right there to where the barb starts, where the bend of the hook starts. We're going to go ahead and put the little egg sack on the back. you got to have a little bit of a hot butt. I think that's key with any of these type of patterns. So get a little clump of orange marabou. I think it works the best. And you honestly do not need a lot of this. It's not supposed to take over the fly. It's supposed to be just a little bit of an accent. So get that guy tied in right there at the top of the hook. And let it hang off the back. Doesn't have to be perfect, but make a few small cuts if you got some excess hanging off. Now you can throw in some eyeballs. If you want to make them yourself like I did with this 40 pound mono, or if you want to buy the pre-made ones, up to you. Crafty scissors, and then tie these guys in at a bit of an angle so they sit right can get a few wraps behind a few wraps in front good to go same deal on the other side you can cross them over each other a little bit if you can tie them in right it should hold pretty good a few in front to the eyes as well and don't do that whenever I just did you really don't want to do that all right good enough they're just eyeballs cool eyeballs and egg sack now we need a body and some legs so i start with uh some of the silly legs chartreuse and orange it's a good color combination with this fly and these are kind of my pinchers if you will so we'll start these guys and work them back towards where the eyes were These guys will hang off the back of the fly, like so. And you can cut them kind of right there where the color change happens <clears throat> from the orange to the chartreuse if you line them up good enough, unlike I did, but you know, close enough. All right, now we're gonna get into the body. This is, um, I think, quarter, quarter inch chenille. And you can use, you know, any type of a dubbing you want. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but. I don't much like making my own, so I uh, use this. So tie that in right there where those initial pinchers were and start getting some wraps. Doesn't have to be perfect on this. You kind of just, you're building the body here is the idea and you can trim in the hell out of it afterwards. Do like three wraps. Then hold that tight. Then you're gonna go with some chrome gold clear silly legs I like to do on this one. Let's get that a little bit closer to where that body stops. Tie your next set of legs in here. Get those guys laid down. Go in front of these legs. Keep the 
body going. Three more wraps. Hold that. Chenille again, and then do one more set of legs. That's gonna give you your initial bright orange legs and then two sets of these guys, just to give it that real buggy look. Tie these guys back in. Try to get them to fall back a little bit. And um, if you're smart, what you'll do is put your bead chain eyes on at the beginning. But sometimes you forget, it's never too late. So we're gonna do some bead chain here. Right now. Just get those guys on. And then we can finish off the actual body of the fly here. Again, wrap in front of those legs. It'll help push them back a little bit. Three more. And then you can tie this guy off. Right behind the bead chain eyes. Cut that off. Come back in front of the bead chain. You can go and finish that. Whip finish that. Probably uh, three of those. And there you go. Now, you can kind of take your legs, trim them up a little bit, straighten them out once you get them off here. And then you don't want to trim the top of the fly. Again, kind of mash down like that. Give yourself a little flat crab type body and um, kind of cut the top and cut the bottom. Make sure not to cut your legs though. And there, you pretty much have it. A little bit of a crabby pattern. And, um, Works great.